So our last colligative property that we're going to look at is osmosis, and that's osmosis is the process by which solvent is going to flow through a semi-permeable membrane from where there is um, more solvent or, or, or a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. So from the solvent to where there's a whole bunch more of the solute or the solution. So semi-permeable membrane allows some things to go through but not everything. And so if you have these different systems here, you can see, um, well, it's the same system, we're just moving it along in time. So here you have solvent on this side, you have the solution. So you can see that you have the little blue particles in there. Those are your solute particles. Um, and so water is going to want to go from where there's more water to where there's less water. So it's going to flow in this direction. The solvent is going to flow into the solution. And the osmotic pressure is pretty much like how much pressure do you have to apply in order to prevent the, um, uh, the flow of the solvent there. That's one way to think about it. So what does it say here? Pressure applied to equalize the fluid levels. That's the osmotic pressure, um, which has to do with this, this flow of the solvent from where there's more solvent to where there's less solvent. So higher solvent concentration, which means there's lower solute, that sort of thing. Osmotic pressure is N over V times R times T. N over V is just moles over liters. That's just molarity. R is our gas constant. So this might look a lot like PV equals NRT, um, but now instead of talking about gases, we're talking about osmotic pressure. So we change that P to a pi. It's not the pi in your calculator. It's not the 3.14, whatever, whatever. It is osmotic pressure. It's a, it's just another symbol. It's the pressure. You're looking for that in ATM. N over V, that's just your molar concentration, R times T. R is the gas constant. T has to be in Kelvin. So watch your units again. Remember R? Remember what R was? R, uh, there we go, is um, 0.0821 in liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So those are uni the units that we're looking for. So in this problem, it's just a straight up plug and chug. What's the osmotic pressure? So they said, what's pi? That's what you're looking for. Um, they give you a temperature. Let's say temperature is uh, 20 degrees Celsius, but you don't like Celsius. You want to put it in Kelvin because Kelvin is an our R, R constant. So we're going to add 273 to that. So we get 293 Kelvin. That's our temperature. Uh, they give us the molar molarity. So sometimes they give you moles and liters and you have to find molarity first. That's fine. So sometimes it's easier to use it, use this equation in this form. Sometimes if they just give you molarity, just plug molarity in right there. And then we have our R. So our pi is M2 times R, 0.0821. And our T is 293. And if you want to Look at your units. This is moles over liters. This is liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So you can see that atmospheres is going to be your, your unit for osmotic pressure, which kind of makes sense. So when you work all that out, take a minute to plug that in your calculator. You should get 0 0.048 atm for your osmotic pressure. All right, so that was just a straight up plug and chug. Just watch your units. Um, MRT pi equals MRT. If you have an electrolyte, you're just going to add the I at the end, right? If you needed an, um, a, an electrolyte, you could just add that Van Hoff factor on at the end. Just tack it on the end because molarity is moles over liters, so moles times the Van Hoff factor um, will work for an electrolyte. Some other terms that are kind of related to osmotic pressure that you may have seen before, isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic. Isotonic means the osmotic pressure is the same on both sides of the membrane, or the concentrations are the same on both sides of the membrane. So if you're going to put a, um, like your contact solution should be isotonic with your, uh, with the rest of your body, that sort of thing. Um, hypertonic, hypertonic, here is hypertonic. What happens uh, is if you had a cell that was sitting in a solution where the solute concentration outside is greater than inside, then all the water is going to leave the cell and it's going to shrivel up. If you have a hypotonic solution, that means the solute concentration outside is less than inside, um, and so the water is going to enter the cell and then eventually the cell will burst. So you may have seen some of those terms in anatomy or, or something. Um, let's see, Another, one more problem. So osmotic pressure of an aqueous solution of a certain protein. So think about proteins are, proteins are, are um, pretty big. There's a lot of atoms in there. So if we're calculating the, the molar mass, it might be pretty big, so don't be scared by a, a huge molar mass. Um, so the osmotic pressure of the aqueous solution was determined um, 
in it was used to, was measured to determine the protein smaller mass. So we're looking for the protein smaller mass. The solution contained 3.5 milligrams, okay, of protein. So we're going to have to convert those to not milligrams. Um, the solution contained 3.5 milligrams of protein, dissolved in enough water to form five milliliters of solution. So our units look terrible here. The osmotic pressure of the solution at this particular temperature was found to be this. I don't like any of these units. Um, treating the protein as a non-electrolyte, calculate its molar mass. So if you think about molar mass, it's molar mass. Again, we're trying to find the molar mass. That's ultimately what we're looking for. That's grams per mole. Okay, well, they give us milligrams. We can go from milligrams to grams. So we really have to find the moles. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to find the moles here. They gave us something about osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure we know is N over V times R times T. And if we had an electrolyte, we'd add ion at the end there, but we don't. This is a non-electrolyte, so we don't have to worry about I. The Van Hoff factor is just going to be one. It's a protein. Uh, N is the moles. That's kind of what we're looking for. So we must already know everything else. So we have pi here. And they tell us the pi is right there. It's 1.54 tor. Do you like tor? No, nobody likes tor. Let's convert that to ATM. And let's just do it right away. Let's do all our unit conversions right away so we don't have to think about them. So we get 0 0.00203 ATM. All right. Pi N is what we're looking for. V is what? Five? Five milliliters? Oh, we don't like milliliters. We have to convert those to liters. Divide that by a thousand. So that's 0 0.00500 liters. You can use scientific notation anytime you want to. R, we already know R. R is the 0 0.0821. And your units are liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Mole Kelvin. And then the last one is the temperature, which is 25 with 273. This is 298 Kelvin. So now we can plug all of that in, or you could rearrange the equation to solve for moles. I like to rearrange the equation to solve for moles. So I have, I'm just going to multiply both sides by volume here. Let me do it in red. All right, so that cancels that. And then I'll divide by RT, divide by RT. So I have my moles are just equal to pi times V over R times T. Now I can plug all that in. Okay, so n here is equal to pi, which is 0 0.00203 times v, 0 0.005 over r, 0.0821, and t, which is 298. And when you work out that for n, you get 4.14 times 10 to the negative 7 moles. All right, and then the molar mass is just the grams. Oh, I never converted those milligrams, so I had 3.5 milligrams. There are 1,000 milligrams and one gram. So I can just move that over 3.50. Let's do scientific notation now, times 10 negative 3 grams. So my molar mass is just my grams over moles. Ah, where'd they go? grams over moles, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3 oops, grams over 4.14 times 10 to the negative 7 moles, and your molar mass ends up being about 8.45 times 10 to the 3, that's positive 3, grams per mole. So that's pretty big, because proteins are can be pretty big. So what did we do there? We just plugged it into this equation. The, the pi is n over v times r times t. And you just have to be careful with your units. Make sure your uh, your pressure is in atmospheres. Make sure your volume's in liters. Your temperature's in Kelvin. Um, when you find the molar mass, if you do it this way, and they start with milligrams, make sure you put those in grams. Grams per mole is molar mass.